it's really a, a pilgrimage to a local deli or to get Holy wine. So it's, it's really just uh, making a big deal out of nothing uh -huh. or making something ordinary, something special out of something ordinary. You go where there's a lot of people gathering, you take it to the people, and that works great, you know? Especially in New York City. New York City is the, by far the best, and people love to be entertained, and people are spontaneous and are looking for something new. And when we toured cross country, we, we played street music, Seattle, San Francisco, all, all, all across. And there's weird rules about where you can play, how you can play. When we were in Seattle, we were on uh, the sidewalk and we had crossed a crack in the sidewalk and the cops came and said we had to move three inches because we were on private property. It's that kind of thing. But there was a thing in the city where there was a guy that was playing on the street in Times Square. and. They confiscated his gear and he sued the city and he won in First Amendment rights to be able to play in the city. There's, you, as a street performer, you have to be aware of crowd control, being too loud, being obnoxious, stopping the flow of traffic. So there's a, there's a big give and take, but in general, at least I, I think New York is, is really open and people are open to experience street music. dulcimer okay. and it, it started actually in Persia a couple thousand years ago someone took a, a little harp it was called a lyre back then and usually strummed it someone put it down and hit it with sticks and then that became the santur and then it evolved into different forms or and just went all over the world in different forms different names I have one from Thailand that's called a Kim it's slightly different um, and it eventually became the harpsichord and then the piano. So essentially when people play a piano, they hit the keys of a piano and inside there's hammers hitting strings. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the keys out of the picture and I'm actually directly hitting the strings like the inside of a piano. Right so, to the and, source. Right, and since I'm, I'm a drummer, I, it's a percussion instrument like a piano is, but I'm able to actually drum on the instrument so I can play rhythm and melody at the same time. So. started getting into some like, small drum kit and some other things before I did and then when I was old enough we started to play together so we've been playing together they for had, they, a really they had, long time. They had the program in elementary school basically but our, our mother was in the choir and it turned out that the, the choir director was the band leader in the elementary school and uh, when they give the examples of all the instruments they never have the drums and it's because everybody would want to be a drummer as a kid and so because we knew the band leader it was easy to go up and say where's the drums and so it was kind of being initiated into a secret club and so that nurtured our our interest in it 
and it was just always that way. And then uni, it's been 17 years, I guess, maybe. Playing in the subway is a great, great way to try new things and experiment because you, you get a, an immediate reaction from people. And plus, you know, you can just, it's, you're not constricted with time or anything. You can just keep trying different things out. So. Get it, Mike.